All right, we're talking about the Xfinity Series at Auto Club. If you've already listened to the Cup Series video, I implore you to do that. If you haven't, uh, a lot of the same type of ideas are going to translate from that one into this one here. Uh, very quickly, just talking about the fact that we might not have a uh, just a day of practice, even possibly no on-track activity Saturday. Uh, that would end up leading the starting grid to be what the qualifying order is. The drivers that would go home would end up being uh, Smithley and Ryan Vargas, which, uh, man, guys, we better put out, you know, a welfare check on Ryan Vargas, man, missing two races in a row. Poor guy. I don't know if he's going to make it. When we look at how this race is going to play out, yes, we're going to want to chase uh, some place differential plays that are going to be in the back of the field, okay, like Ross Chastain, like, uh, you know, Daniel Hemrick, you know, Sheldon Creed, uh, even Kaz Grala, Jeffrey Earnhardt, Moffitt, Reddick, you know, and, and it's it's very much the same thing as the Cup Series video in a sense of, yes, I, I understand that this this these are kind of rough slates this weekend if if they do get ran if they do get rained out, um, but kind of where I'm at this year if we have chalky slates we don't have chalky slates let's just play the people, you know let's just kind of worry about eating the chalk with some lines trying to get different on other lines maybe fading the chalk with other lines you know I think a week where both races are very much kind of being decided for us and where we can go and what drivers we can do or use. Do like a max 10 lines, nine lines from around there. I'll probably be right around there, especially for Xfinity, just because it's a bit of a cheaper entry fee into these contests. Like I'll probably do 10 lines for Xfinity and I'll probably have 65 to 70% of possibly three to seven, three to seven, possibly three to three to four drivers, you know, uh, because I think it, it's very unlikely that, People like Chastain, people like Hemrick, people like Sheldon Creed. Uh, I, I think it's very hard for them to not be optimal in a race like this to where we have some guaranteed place differential. Same thing with Tyler Reddick. Like, I think he could very easily get up there. And I haven't finalized projections because I would like to actually make sure that we rain out practice and qualifying before I start like actually doing the projections. But in my head, look, or in my head, looking at the price and everything, like kind of the same thing with, with cup series. Like I, I can see percentages on certain people skyrocketing just because they're going to get there in place. Differential plays alone. Um, I want to focus primarily on talking about Austin Hill and John Henry check, because this would end up being your front row for this event. We'll talk about Tyler Reddick in the 24, uh, in a second, but Austin Hill, I want to be bullish on Austin Hill this year. I think he is going to run extremely well. I think that between him, Cole Custer, Nemechek, I think these are going to be the guys who for a win. So, and in, in, that's why I, I've already explained, and I kind of know that I'll probably be 65-70% on several people. I want to get different with my lap leaders. So I'm going to play an Austin Hill line. I want to chase Austin Hill in a line. I think there's a chance that he can win this race. And lead quite a few laps. I love Nemechek, so I'm going to have a lineup with Nemechek. You know, I can make arguments for Cole Custer, you know, with how well he killed the field last year and how well he's going to, how well he runs this racetrack and how well that car is going to be performing. You know, Cole Custer's won his last two races here. You know, who else has been extremely fast, consistent here? You know, Austin Dillon. I understand he's in the Collie car, but this will be a great example and a great uh, intro onto what this car can do when Kyle Busch hops into this car later in the season in a few weeks. You know, Austin Dillon, wildly consistent outside of the fact that he DNF'd in 2015 with a 38th place finish, fifth, first, and fourth. You know, $9,800 for Austin Dillon, who is going to start. I have to find Austin Dillon's name. Give me a moment. The Dillon, the uh, Austin Dillon. Uh, shit, what is that? 36. Don't do math. He would be he'd be twenty six on the qualifying order, so that's gonna put him like where twenty third, twenty second, twenty fourth, somewhere around there on the starting grid. I think that's I can he get to forty five points? I think he can very easily. I think Austin Dillon can can very easily get there. Um, so yes, I understand. You know this this slate kind of seems unfun. You know some people might be annoyed that DraftKings isn't adjusting the price accordingly, but I would honestly much rather price them based on what they are doing here versus 
the possibility that we get that we get rained out you know like it, it's still fine guys we're still going to be competing against each other we're all still using the same relative type of lineups or type of uh, player pool you know just let's let's get different in a few places let's play some lines that just eat the chalk and then move on and play some lines that don't eat the chalk just move on this is now this is not a week that i'd want to do single entry on i think if you're doing that you're not gonna have a good time um but i i don't think it's that bad real quick Let's kind of go through the field real fast in terms of Tyler Reddick, Sam Hunt car. We've ta- I've talked about this. I've talked about this car specifically, Sam Hunt before. When we look at what Nemechek has done with this car, when we look at what this car is able to do, when it has a capable driver behind it, top tier, top tier equipment, TRD supported, top tier equipment, and Joe Gibbs satellite, whatever you want to look at. It, this car is this car is a top. These cars are top ten cars, which is why I'm so hard on Jeffrey Earnhardt when he's gotten in these cars with other people when they've gotten in these cars because they don't they're not performing with what this car has the ability to perform at so Tyler Reddick in this car fantastic Cole Custer fantastic Nemechek fantastic if you want to get different I think Allgaier is a place that you'd want to start you know getting interesting with your you know, building lineups and stuff, and and very quickly, as I stated in the as I've stated in other videos and stuff, if you want to support me, support Pierce, support the work that we do, consider joining the podcast on March first, or consider joining the consider joining the Patreon on March first. Also, I'm focusing on doing much more, you know, post race videos, post week video or post weekend videos of just how I approach things. I am going to try and do more Patreon behind the wall videos. That'll go free once the slate locks, but just more videos like behind the paywall, talking about line of construction, talking about like what my projections are showing, what lines to use, and blah, 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 and so forth, and then actually recording me building lines and stuff. Sometimes that'll be the same, sometimes it'll be different, or it'll be the same video, sometimes it'll be two different videos. But I just, I want to just start having more and more of my process out there because I don't know if I'm going to be doing this next year. And if I can help anybody win anything or if they can learn anything by how I approach stuff, let's let's do it. Um, so... I understand this video might not be like the picks and stuff, but I mean, I got, I got a lot of videos out there. Plus, plus the sheets, plus the heat map, plus everything. So like I said, if you want to support me, uh, you can join the Patreon below. All guy are going to be starting third. I like this play, to be honest with you. Uh, I think it makes a lot of sense. I think it's very intriguing. Can we make an argument that all guy can get a good run, especially specifically if this race is ran with no practice, the track will have rubber in it from the Cup Series race, but is there a chance that Allgaier could take them three wide and come out with the lead entering three on the first lap? I think so. I think Allgaier, I think Austin Hill are drivers that I think you should consider using in very chalky types of lineups. I think it makes a lot of sense. It's kind of unfortunate we have so many good cars starting up front, or not good cars, we have so many bad cars starting up front that have a lot of potential because we're not able to really get aggressive on being on certain people before like the field or before the field catches up on how they they're going to do like for example jeb burton going to start inside the top 10 this week he's not going to finish top 10 he's, he's probably going to finish around like 16th or 17th but like and i think that's even a bit of a ceiling but if jeb burton has speed you know he's not going to be viable for dfs but people we're going to see that he has speed you know and that'll kind of you know kind of get rid of the mysterious factor or like the possibility factor of what these guys can do same thing with greg alden in the zero eight like we don't expect him to do well but uh, dfs wise but like if he goes out there and finishes you know 19th or something you know that would absolutely blow my brain you know in a situation where if we have regular qualifying greg alden's probably going to start in the 30s you know we're, we're going to have a lot of people who are going to probably start outside the, the top you know 25 that might actually end up showing speed that we won't be able to get you know, a gigantic uh, head start on, like Anthony Alfredo in the BJ McLeod car, okay, is a great example. I don't see him being viable this weekend at Auto Club. However, he's in the BJ McLeod car. This could go one of two different directions. One, they might not have speed. It might just be BJ, you know, and this could be a situation where he's bought some older junior motorsports cars like he, like he has done the previous years. And then if you remember, they, he, he bought, uh, BJ McLeod purchased uh, motors and equipment from Junior Motorsports uh, last year, some older uh, equipment and stuff, and he had them destroyed all within like the first six races of the year. Stefan Parsons, Josh Williams, uh, 
forgot who else was behind the wheel, but they all got destroyed within the first month. So we weren't able to really take advantage of that or really see what they have. So like Anthony Alfredo, I would assume because Anthony Alfredo is probably bringing more sponsorship than what uh, they've been accustomed to. I think that this car relative to what BJ McLeod usually brings is going to be fast. I think this car could potentially be a, a top 21 car, you know, and finish around, you know, 20, 20, 20th, 21st, somewhere around there. Or, you know, he defaults to a 25th. Whatever the case is, we've kind of lost that advantage of, you know, either being overweight or underweight in Anthony Alfredo because he's he's just not mathematically viable this week. And we're going to get the answer of what equipment they're bringing to the track. So it's more of an unfortunate situation there uh, just for this type of week. We're kind of missing out on those uh, potential early season, like right out of the gate plays or gut feelings. Uh, in terms of the Alpha Beta crew, you know, Raja Karuth, Ryan Ellis, uh, Jeffrey Earnhardt, Raja Karuth, yet again, not going to be viable. I don't think we have to necessarily worry about him. Jeffrey Earnhardt and Ryan Ellis, I think we should try and get some exposure to them. Alex LeBay in the 28 machine, like kind of not getting the chance to – actually, let me look real fast. Uh, where are we at? LeBay. In the 28 car for, for Rod Sieg. You know, we've seen Kyle Sieg be optimal here. We've seen – them have speed. We've seen Parker hop in these cars and have speed. We've seen, you know, clearly Ryan Ellis has, not Ryan Ellis, Ryan Reed, Ryan Reed, not Ryan Reed, Ryan Sieg have speed. Uh, we kind of lose that ability here. Like Alex LeBay, uh, if you're playing Alex LeBay this weekend, you need to hope that he hits that ceiling uh, performance. Otherwise, he's not he's not going to work. Um, who else did I wanted to focus on real fast? Oh, yeah, Kaz Grala. So here's a situation going to be starting in the second half of the field, okay? We know what Nemechek has. We know what we we know what speed the Sam Hunt cars have. This is a situation where I think we might end up getting into a cha- getting into a situation where Kaz Grala might end up kind of being chalky at seventy four hundred dollars. Going to be able to fit in a lot of different lines. This car has speed. This team is going to bring the speed. It all depends on what what Kaz Grala does. Does he spin out? Does he destroy the car? Does he does he do stupid stuff? We're going to have yellows in both these races. So, Kaz Grala has a true potential of getting a top twelve finish this weekend. He also has a true potential of being one of those yellows. You know, it it, it it's uh, I don't know. Like I think this is where this this week is interesting. It's not necessarily your full lineup, but the one or two. You know, low owned place differential plays, or just kind of low owned, you know, cheaper guys of what their potential might be that people might not be on. Uh, you know, I think that's where you got to get different with like a main lap leader and then one of your like just kind of off the wall value plays. A lot of people to work with. You know, Bailey Curry going to be starting in the back of the field. He'll most likely uh, get at least 10 place differential points. Uh, Blaine Perkins, you know, Joey Gaze, Ryan Ellis, like between these guys right now, Ryan Ellis is screaming out to me of probably having the best car. Uh, Timmy Hill, when we look at how MBM ran and missed the race at Daytona, which I thought was kind of shitty that uh, Timmy Hill didn't get to go again because Timmy Hill did the right thing and got out of the gas uh, as he had the car in front of him. Like, I, I think that was kind of crappy. It was kind of weird of how the officials just kind of came over and said, well, Timmy Hill, if you would have stayed in the gas, that, that probably would have made your lap better. It, like, I, I was pretty pissed that MBM didn't make the, uh, didn't make the Daytona fi- or didn't make the Daytona race for Xfinity because they put a lot of money into it. That 66 car, which I needed to, I need to look real quick. I haven't seen any photos of this 66 yet. Last week, uh, MBM had loaned out a motor from Hendrick for the 66 car for Stacy. Stacy didn't queue. The 13 that Timmy Hill qualified with was an in-house uh, car, which I believe it was still one of their better motors. But the fact that they put in quite a lot of money to Daytona, didn't make it in, I don't think they necessarily lost a ton of money. And I'm very curious because usually the, the main focus of MBM is the 13 car. The fact that they withdrew the 13 and kept the 66 here, uh gives me just and this is me pondering i you know it's still thursday we'll we'll look up and and find data either supporting this or not but that 66 machine might be the the 66 they were playing to run at daytona that they just didn't get in that they're bringing to auto club you know i don't think that would be insane i don't think that would be crazy for him to do that specifically when you've already invested that money into the motor like, the fact that Timmy Hill is going to 
which I, I'm guessing in the 66, is going to have a good motor under this car. Timmy Hill starting nearly dead last should be a fantastic play. You know, we'll, we'll confirm that, you know, at some point, you know, this week uh, for the live show. But I, I think that 66 is, is has a potential of being, you know, a top 25, if not top 20 car with that motor behind him and with Timmy Hill behind the wheel. You know, everybody knows I'm, I'm a big Timmy Hill uh, <laughs> supporter and stuff. So, you know, it, it, it really just depends on if we get in the if we get a rain out or not. Uh, that's kind of how I'm looking at. It. If we do, if we do have practice, lean on the practice speed. I think that'll give us the best indication of where these drivers are. That's kind of where I'm at. Um, but yeah, if you guys want me to answer anything, if you want to contact me, if you have any questions or whatever, let me know on Discord, on Twitter, Patreon, and the YouTube comments below. And I'm looking forward to this, to these, to these races this weekend. It'll be, um. It'll be interesting building lines and then trying to find, you know, the one or two places to get different and kind of have, uh, see if we can get different, specifically for Xfinity, because a lot of these touts, to be honest, and this ain't me, this is me reiterating words that I've read in discords that I've seen from other people, a lot of touts out there kind of mail in Xfinity and Truck Series, that's kind of why I mentioned Timmy Hill, I think that Timmy Hill has a real chance of being fast here, Ryan Ellis, uh, you know, Kaz Grala, you know, even possibly Alex LeBay. A lot of guys, and oh, and Brett Moffat in 25, you know, like these these are cars that we don't really have questions answered of how fast they're going to be on speed, and we kind of want to attack those through like the first four or five-ish races of the year. We want to specifically be kind of aggressive in that, like Austin Dillon in the 10 car for colleague, as I said, like this is the car that Kyle Busch will be in. If this car is going to have speed, Austin Dillon has the ability to show us if it has like top three speed. We don't have to wait till Kyle Busch. We could just see what Austin Dillon does. But I want to be ahead of that curve. I don't want to wait until, you know, we have that data to support it. I want to be bullish right out of the gate, you know. So that, that's kind of that's kind of where I'm at. Hopefully that makes sense. And uh, I'll see you guys in the live shows and stuff this uh, weekend, possibly Saturday and Sunday, possibly just on Sunday. You know, we'll we'll see how the weather does in uh, in good old uh, California. So I will. I'll see you guys later. Thank you for listening.